Action now from Capitol Hill. Joining us is California Congressman Daryl Issa, Chairman of the House Oversight Committee. Congressman, thanks so much for being here. What is your reaction to this newly released CBO report that paints a much more dismal picture of the uh, effect that Obamacare will have on the economy? Well, I think this is a much more accurate picture. You know, CBO originally said this was going to be budget neutral. It, it bought into a lot of assumptions that health care costs would go down, that medical, you know, all these good things would happen. But in fact, as the rollout begins and you're beginning to able to score the actual effects, you're now realizing this is a job killer. You know, the trillion dollars is a, an incredible amount of money and the American people can't even fathom that much money. But two and a half million jobs, all you have to do is figure I'm going to be one of those two and a half million and you can really feel the effects. And, you know, and when we score the cost, we don't score the cost as two and a half million people being on welfare. We score a loss of economic activity. But if you go from having a job and being productive and supporting your family to being long term unemployed or unable to find a job with the kind of pay that supports your family, you're going to real, really feel the effects of uh, Obamacare. And this is after we figured out that it's also not making health care affordable. Huh. And, and Congressman, as you said, the CBO has now today says that we will lose 2.5 million jobs over the next 10 years as a result of Obamacare. And the way they figure it out, the thinking is that employers will offer fewer full-time jobs and that people will be more inclined to leave jobs that perhaps they're not crazy about because they believe they'll be covered by Obamacare. So you used to have to stick with your job to get health care and now that will no longer be part of the calculus. But doesn't this beg the question, the CBO said 800,000 jobs would be lost. How did the CBO get it so wrong? Well, unfortunately, the CBO, uh, which is a nonpartisan organization, had to work with the assumption, had to make assumptions based on what they told were going to happen. Now, 2,400 pages, 2,400 pages uh, get thrown together at the last minute after the score was in, and then 70,000 and counting pages of new regulations. What the CBO is able to do now is look at the law as it is and find out it's very different than what Speaker, then Speaker Pelosi said was going to happen. There were lots of things they said would happen that won't happen. Uh, and, and quite frankly, there's other surprises yet to come. As we see that, in fact, this is a big increase in Medicaid, uh, where it's all, all your tax dollar uh, being spent. It's going to be a problem. I was at lunch just a few minutes ago with my colleagues, and we were talking about the fact that at some point people are going to realize that we tax medical devices, and the assumption that was in the bill was that the cost of medical devices wouldn't go up, even though we're adding a tax to these devices. Uh -huh. Everyone knows if you tax something, it's going to get passed on to the consumer in the way of higher cost for the stent for all these medical devices we rely on to save your life and improve your life. So is there a problem with Obamacare that is now costing millions of jobs and trillions of dollars? Yes. Can it be fixed? Not easily. This really is a law that was written badly from the ground up. So, Congressman, at that lunch with your Republican colleagues that you just left, what did you decide to do about this? Now that we have more accurate numbers, what are Republicans going to do? Well, Republicans, of course, have, have tried to repeal this law. We've tried to uh, repeal portions of it. Certainly the medical device tax is one where it makes no sense at all to tax people on the theory that you will pay for health care by taxing health care. Uh, but one of the things we're trying to do is we're trying to offer alternatives that will drive down the cost of health care, including tort reform, try to get rid of unnecessary procedures that are only done to cover, if you will, the backside uh, of hospitals and doctors because they know if they don't do extra tests that they may have a problem if something goes wrong and they want to be able to prove it. So there are some things we can do to reduce cost, but at the end of the day, the Affordable Care Act, as it was known, is not affordable, it's not providing affordable care, and it's costing now millions of jobs in the, in the near future. It's already slowed economic activity. To a certain extent, you really do have to be willing to dramatically reduce what was in the law. It doesn't mean that people with pre-existing conditions can't have something taken care of or that uh, your 26-year-old child can't still be covered. But let's be honest, those things cost too. They were not free. They are part of the reason that people's health care costs are going up. Uh, the fact is, 
each of these things has to be honestly talked about to find out if people want to pay for it. As you know, 62-year-old men do not want to pay for maternity care, and yet under the current law, that's part of the scheme. Uh, there's a lot of those things that if Congress is allowed to act, we can act. But until there's an intervening election, until next November, it's pretty clear the president's not budging. The House can pass anything it wants. The yeah. Senate is going to stonewall us. And I think that's what the American people have to understand, is these figures will be worse by the time we get to next January in hopes that we can begin trimming this law. All right. Uh, we will see how the American public reacts to these new figures today. Congressman Darrell Issa, thanks for joining us.